Okay, we are uh, class number six, and it's exciting because uh, after all of our introductions, we are ready to, to actually look at look at, at our Gemara um, from the inside. So just to quickly um, recap what we what we spoke about last week. Excuse me. Sorry, Ivor. Two weeks ago. Ivor is is so, such a good student. He comes even when there isn't class. <laughs> the perfect student. <laughs> uh, I'd like to publicly apologize again. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, we're going to be needing we're going to be needing this this page. I, I have an extra one. Yeah. What Pass. number are you needing? This is pages 14 and 15. Okay. It's exactly the ones you have. Okay, you can pass these down. Um, and what we started talking about the last two and three weeks, we started talking about uh, uh, function words. Okay, and I'll just I'll just do a quick recap um, of the fact that. Good um, evening. I think I think maybe we, we, uh, for now we'll stay here, but may, maybe we'll have to move into a different uh, different room. You sure? Okay. Um, let me just close the door. We spoke about function words. We spoke about the fact that all too often people think that the, uh, the uh, hurdle uh, of learning Gemara is the language barrier. And it's just a matter of understanding what the words mean. And uh, we've, we've, we, we kind of brought some examples and we understood that that's not the biggest hurdle. Because even if you were to take an English translation, uh, Sensino, or even uh, Schadenstein, just a translation, you wouldn't necessarily understand what's going on. We said that the, the chaf, or the, the challenge of what you need to really figure out in order to get Gemara, is not uh, what the words mean, okay, or not even what the Gemara is saying, rather what the Gemara is doing, okay. Uh, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's its own system, and we need to kind of crack the system, understand what the rules and the uh, and the methods that the Gemara uses. Um, and once we understand that the first thing you need to understand the Gemara is not what it's saying, but what it's doing, then you can actually understand what's going on, and that's what we're going to start doing. So we said the first thing we want to do when we find when we approach a sugya um, is we want to be able to identify what we call function words. Uh, we have more here. Please. I see that there's two people sharing it down there. So, here. Um, we said function words. And we said, again, for those people who weren't here, that uh, every, uh, any, every sugya uh, is going to be comprised of seven possible components. Right? Every sugya you will ever see is comprised, comprised of some variations of, uh, uh, of these seven components or some of these seven components. What are they? Let's remember very quickly. What are the seven components of any seven possible components of any given sugya? Statement in Hebrew is Memra. Okay, which is statement. Next, a Shaila, which is a question or a query. Okay, then a Tshuva, which is an answer. Then Kushia, which is a another question. No, it is an attack. Okay. And after that, possible, yeah, Tears, after that, right? a terut, which is what? Rebuttal. What? Rebuttal or removal of an attack. Okay. Removal of attack. Okay. Now, the reason I like calling it a removal of an attack and not a rebuttal is because it, it makes us, it makes sure that we can, it, it, it reminds us that a terut will always, course, will always be relating to what? To the, to, to the, to the attack. Like these two are, will always go together. A kushia will always be followed by a terut, except in the very rare occasion when it does. But <laughs> it does. Okay. Uh, after terut, we mentioned what? Raya. Raya, which is what? Proof. A proof. And after that, a stira, which is a rejection. <laughs> Any sugya in the world is made out of some combinations of at least some of these. Okay. Um, and the next stage of what we did is we said that there are certain words that are kind of get dead giveaways as belonging to one to each one of these seven categories. And that's what this page is. I've taken and put on some of uh, the most common, uh, uh, what I call function words in Gemara, and categorized them. And therefore, really, even though you don't uh, have to, it would be nice to have a very large Aramaic vocabulary. These, this, again, this is a, this is a small list. But, the, but this is, this would cover, like, 50, 60% of the really important words you need to know. Um, again, 
not, 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 not in being able to understand what the Gemara is saying, rather, in other, being, being able to understand what the Gemara is doing. That's, that's what learning Gemara, that's what you need to understand to be able to learn Gemara. Okay? What it's saying, you can look just at the translation. Uh, but if I see the word, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, Y, okay, I can, I can just see it as a translation and understand, okay, there's the word W A, the letters W H Y spell the word Y, I'm going to say, oh, I can expect that there's going to be a question. Okay, so now I know that someone's asking a question, which means that this, there was some kind of source or something that someone's asking a question on, and I know that the question uh, uh, is going to be followed by an answer, so now I could look, okay, the question is about to start here because, the le because I know that the word why means that someone's asking a question and, uh, and I'm going to look for an answer and, and that's how you, that's what we're going to be doing. So, uh, any questions up to here? What, what I've done now is I've done a recap of where we finished off two weeks ago. Okay? Um, and what we're going to do today is we're going we're gonna to just jump head, head first into our sugya and uh, um, wait, did I give out today's handout? No, I did not. Here. Here. Please, here. Please take one and pass the, pass the others around. Oh. Let's see. Okay. So, what, what we've done here is um, starting th from this week and going on until whenever, uh, as long as we have a shear, um, <coughs> there are five steps that, uh, um, that we are going to be taking from this point on any time when we're learning a sugya. Okay? Any sugya that you get to, these are the five stages that we're going to be going to. The first stage is to identify the function words, okay? which is based on this list that we have here, but as time goes by, you will see that you can do it without any lists because there's not that many words okay, that serve as function words. Okay? Most of the function words are really easy to remember and we'll see them enough times that you won't need any lists and you'll just know them. So the first stage is, is to skim through, skim, skim through the text looking and you're not trying to understand. This is one of the things that's really hard to do but it's really important to gain this skill which is to be able to read something even though you can't understand it and not be tempted to try to understand each word. I'll give you an example. When you teach Lahavdil, okay? When you, tra when you teach kids uh, how to read um, and they're reading a story and uh, you see this, uh, even when kids are learning English, let's say a kid who's not a Hebrew speaker, you're teaching them Hebrew, to, 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 you know, to gain the skill of being able to try to read a whole sentence and I get to a word that I'm stuck on, it's okay. Re continue reading and you'll see that you can actually understand from context. Or even without that word, you can get a j the gist of what's going on. It's, it's, that's something that we're going to practice and we'll see that it's, it's extremely valuable to be able to do that. So the first thing is to identify function words, to skim over the text and to say, oh, I this is a function word. I'm going to mark it, or I'm going to write it down on my on my list over here, right? Over here, function word. Okay? There are eight function words in Aisugya. I will I will very soon identify for you which where Aisugya starts and ends. Sorry, what what is a sugya? Like what? Is a a sugya is a defined section. Okay, an independent, uh, a defined section of the Gemara, which is usually when is discussing one topic. Okay. So what, what defines it? Like is it is it easily identifiable that you know the sugya starts here and ends there? Well, or? the most broad way uh, to define it is that <coughs> Mara itself defines it by putting by by by, uh, uh, by with colons. Usually, usually, by putting colons at the beginning and end of a sugya. Okay. Now, there's sometimes there are other ways that the Gemara will, will, will identify that it's something new, or you can just, by the topic, by reading through it, you can realize, oh, wait a second, this is a new discussion. Uh, but, but usually it's pretty identifiable uh, by those colons. Okay? Um, so, um, so the first stage is to identify the function words, and to either, uh, I know, as, as a skill develops, you don't necessarily have to actually write it down. But let's say I... Uh, um, and after years of learning, I can. I, I, this is the way I still learn today. After many years of learning Gemara, I will first read the entire section, 
so I get an idea of more or less what's going on. I get an idea of more or less what the topic is and who's talking and you know how it ended off. I just get an overview of what's going on and then I go back to the beginning and I start breaking it up. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going through IPs, working in Chavutat, uh, identifying the function words and writing them down over here. Or if you want to do it in your, in your Gemara, you can under you can you can highlight it or or or, hi, or uh, you know underline it, whatever it is. Um, the sec th second thing is to create a logical sequence. Okay, um, meaning um, the same thing we did three weeks ago when we looked at my fictitious sugya, my, the fictitious story that we were working on. We said, oh look. The function word over here, it's y, o, so this must be a question. And then, uh, and then afterwards, there's, uh, there's going to be an answer. And let's try to identify where it begins. And then say, OK, does this, logical, does this look like a logical sequence? If it looks like a logical sequence, then good. Then we go, 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 go on to the next stage. If it's not, then we must have, done, we must have gone wrong somewhere in identifying the function words. Okay? And if, if what I'm saying right now sounds a little bit vague, once we start it, We'll, we'll see, we'll, see that it, that, that we'll work through it and we'll see that it makes sense. So the first thing is to identify function words. The second thing is to create a logical sequence. The third thing is to create a flow chart, which, uh, uh, which helps to kind of visualize the flow of the, of the sugya, the logical flow of it, where it starts, where it ends. We'll see this sugya that we're starting with is a very simple structure, really, really a basic simple structure, which we'll look at the flow chart and we'll be like, oh, you didn't even need a flow chart for that. That just, just kind of makes sense. That's good. That's why we're starting with this one, and it's because, it, because it's an interesting topic. But some of them, there's so many different stages that intertwine with each other and go back and repeat, and so the flowchart will really help us visualize it. Four stages to insert the content. After I know what the stages are going to be, there's going to be a question, there's going to be an attack, a removal of an attack, an attack on the attack. There's going to be a, uh, two proofs being brought, but one of them is going to be, there's going to be an attack on one of the proofs, and then there's going to be a rebuttal of it. And after I understand what the structure and the flow of the, of the arguments and of the uh, process is going to be, I can then go and say, okay, now let's look at the actual content. Now let's try, go and try to understand what they're actually saying. But I know exactly where it's going to begin. I know what's going to happen to each one of the opinions. I know which one's going to be accepted and which one's going to be rejected. And I know what the way the conclusion is going to be. And now I can actually figure out what it is. Okay. Uh, so that's the four stage of inserting the content. And stage five is second level thinking. Second level thinking is uh, once we understand what is being said uh, and, and how it's being said, we come and say, okay, does this make sense? Does this not make sense? We can look at Rashi. We can look at Tosfot. We can look at attacking the Gemara itself. You know, um, or we can go and talk about the meaning of it or the purpose of what, what, the, what would be the application of it. And we, we would go and we look at, let's see, what the Rambam says about it or how this was decided in later generations. That would be second level, second level thinking. Okay? These five stages are the, these are the golden five stages. When I say golden, I made them up. So, <laughs> the, okay, so unlike the seven stages of the, the, unlike the seven stages of the seven components, which I did not make up, that's Ramchal, so that's like, that, that's real. These are these are these are mine. So, uh, but I found them to work very well. This is how I learn, and this is how, how, how I teach my students to learn. I found it to be very very um, very very good method uh, that that has worked for me and has worked for people that I've taught. So I invite you to try it as well. Um, okay. Any questions so far? Although I didn't say much, I just said like. I just give you five rules. Oh, oh, any what? any questions or comments? What's the flow chart? What, what can you just, just a flow chart what, is? Uh, I know what it is, but how does it apply to? Because what it does is uh, um, this sugya actually won't serve as a good example for us because this this sugya is going to be completely linear, like 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 the mock sugya that uh -huh. we've done, uh -huh. which is completely linear. It's like oh, question, answer, uh, you know, att uh, attack, rebuttal, proof, whatever. So. Uh, um, and that you're just going to see like a flow chart is just going to go like this, like linear. But many times, um, most sugiyot are much more complex. And you're going to have three different answers given. And each one is going to be discussed independently from each other. And unless you make a flow chart, it, get, it gets so confusing. You have no idea where you are in the argumentation. I'm not even talking about because of the Aramaic, even if you're reading it in English. Because, you know, if a, uh, sometimes we have an attack. 
and there will be four different rebuttals brought to it. And each rebuttal will be discussed at length back and forth and, re and, and, and whether it does work or doesn't work and there's going to be three or four different stages for each rebuttal and then at some point you're not sure wait, which, one was, which one was accepted, which one was not accepted. Wait, no, now we're going back. We're we going back to the stage of the rebuttal, we're we going back to the stage of the question and the flow chart helps you visualize it and follow the stages and actually get a sense of what's going on and that is, it's, I found that to be uh, um, very, very, very helpful in not losing track of, of how, of what the sugiya is going, is trying to do. Okay? Any, any other comments? Questions? Right. Yes? Wouldn't it, doesn't in most cases, if the, if the Gemara is going to go back and it's going to take another look at another, at a second or a third opinion, it'll, it a lot of times will restate the question again? Sometimes it will, many times it won't. Oh. Many, many times it will not. It will just say, uh, there'll, be a, there'll be an attack, and we'll say, Ravina Amar, one, two, three. And there'll be a whole long discussion on that. And then it says, uh, you know, Ravashi Amar Hachikama. We'll give a different answer. There'll be a whole long discussion about that. And then we're going to say, well, you know, how does Ravina explain what Ravashi said? There'll be a whole long discussion about that. And then it'll be, yeah, but, oh, since you mentioned, uh, since you mentioned uh, uh, Rabbah already, let me tell you about something that Rabbah said in somewhere else. And then we'll quote that, and then we'll have a discussion about that. At some point, sometimes the Gemara will help you find your way back, and other times it just assumes that you understand the context. Because let's remember that the, that the Gemara is a recording of the live conversations taking place in the Bet Midrash. And therefore, if we are now talking, you all know exactly what point, to, which is that I was about to go into the Gemara, and I said, does anyone have a question? And then you asked a question. And we all know exactly where we're at in the discussion. And we know that in uh, two, three minutes, we're going to get back to where we were. I won't have to say necessarily, OK, everyone, we are now done with this stage of the discussion. Uh, rather, we're going to go back to the Gemara. I won't need to say that. Why? Because we're all sitting right here, and we're talking, and we all understand exactly where we're going. But if, but if someone were just typing up as we were going, typing up what we were saying, and then publish it, so, and, and then someone, uh, you know, in, with a different, in a different language, a thousand years later, that is not familiar with the discourse, you know, what, what is common discourse in our day and age, they would be extremely confused about this conversation happening right now. I don't understand. You were just, you were just about to analyze your Gemara. Why are you not talking about, right? Understand what I'm, understand what I'm doing? I just kind of got loopy within myself. But, but that's exactly what Gemara is doing. But, but for us, we can easily lose track of it because besides the language barrier, besides all that, is because, again, it's a live conversation that's being recorded. So if you're part of the conversation, it could be pretty easy to follow. But if you're looking at it 1,600 years later, and you're not familiar with the lingo or with the kind of discourse, the academic rabbinical discourse, which is what they were using, you have to do this artificial process, this process that we're doing which is kind of like looking at it from the outside. Okay, let's try to detect what the stages are. And what, you know. So yeah, so the Gemara did, sometimes the Gemara will say, okay, let's remember where we were holding. Let's go back over there. Usually it doesn't have the need to do that because the people who were in the middle of talking, you, you didn't need to do that. They were, they were there. Yeah. But, but they would, the, 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 the rabbis would, would in the Gemara um, didn't necessarily all live at the same time. Correct. They're arguing with each other. So we Correct. say sort of a live conversation. Well, uh, so, so any specific piece is a conversation between pe pe between the people who are facing each other. But it could, but the Gemara was compiled. So a lot of different conversations were compiled together. Okay. So it could be that within one sugya you're going to have three different conversations on the same topic being conducted in three different generations. But each one of those is still a conversation happening between two or more people. But the editors, the editors, Ravina and Ravashi, would have taken these three conversations that happened to be, that were on the same topic from three different generations and put them, okay, let's put them in, let's put them together because they're all discussing the same, the same topic. Okay? And sometimes the rabbis of the later generation, the conversation they're having is about the conversation that the rabbis of the generation before them were having on the same topic. So they're actually having a conversation with them, but like about them with them. Okay? So, yeah. Okay.
So you're right. It's not all one big long conversation, and even any one give, and, and even any one given sugya is not necessarily one continuous conversation from the beginning to the end with the same exact people. Okay, we're now going to go back to where we were, <laughs> and we're now going to go uh, um, and we're going to look at the Gemara, and we're going to try to do stage one. Um, so. We can open up our Gemaras to the Kaftet Amud Bet. So Mazel Tov, everyone. We are now officially in, uh, in in class number six. We are now officially actually learning Gemara. And I would encourage you to work with a partner, with a Chevruta. That is one of the most important dynamics of learning Gemara is being able to work with someone else and bouncing ideas off each other. And what we're what we're looking for, and right now it's we, you know the only way to do this right now, unless you're a little bit familiar with the lingo, is to use these sheets, okay? Um, to use these these sheets, I've highlighted in yellow, okay? The the uh, the the ones that are hi highlighted in yellow are the function words that are we're going to be using over the next couple of months. Meaning these are the function words that appear in our Gemara over the next. Uh, Two or three dapim, two or three blocks. Okay, these are not all the ones that are in I specific sugya. Okay, now where are we holding exactly? We're on the kaftet amud aleph, 29a. Sorry, 29a, my mistake. And and uh, um, and the and the colon which appears after the mishnah. Okay, what is what do I mean by that? Everyone see where the mishnah is, right? What what words does the mishnah begin with? Right. Matnitin, right? Matnitin, which is short for quote from the Mishnah. Okay? So, what? Yeah, Matnitin kol mitzvata ben ala'av. But we're actually doing the Gemara. So you see, you guys see where the letter, where the word letter Gimel Mem is, which we know is a, which means, is, which is where, what is starting once, uh, what is starting right after the word, the letter Gimel Mem? And the t the, what? The Gemara, meaning the discussion of the of the rabbis of the right of the Amoraim. Okay. So what where is it? So uh, here, just a second. Here, Gemara. Okay. And it's obviously starting. Okay. It's it's going to be discussing the text that it just quoted. Okay. So, just to start us off, what is the first word of the of the Gemara? My. 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 What does the word what function does the word my serve? So, what? Ask Correct. So, uh, uh, so what we would do over here is, what we would do over here is we would write in the function word, again, if you're highlighting it, so let's say when I learn for myself, this is what I actually do when I learn for myself. I take a pencil and I write on the side of my Gemara, in little I write She'ela. So it's on the, on the word my, I wouldn't do it because it's, it would be obvious to me, but I would still do it because then I would see whether there's a She'ela and then I need to find where the Chuva is. But over here, what we're going to do is we're going to write under the function word, we're going to write the, we're gonna, we're gonna word, write the word my, okay? If you want, you can write the translation of it, which is what's the translation of the word my? What? And function it serves is, is what? A question. Okay, okay, we're identifying what the function word is and then what function it's serving. So I helped you right now with the easiest one. Okay? Because <laughs> it just so happens to be the first one. Um, and uh, that's it. And now you guys continue on your own. Um, and you're going to look for the next function word. You're going to continue reading. Uh, and even if you don't understand what the words are, that's perfectly fine. You're looking for a word that looks like a, a function word or that looks like uh, one of the words from. Uh, now, for instance, if you want, look even, I would say maybe, even take a minute or two to look at some of the words here that are highlighted in yellow and then just match them up, right? So, for instance, if you look at the, so guys, just hold on just for one second, just one second. If you find yourself that you feel a little bit lost and you're not sure exactly what he's supposed to do, what I would say is, I would say is even look at this, at this, at this list. And just look at the highlighted, the highlighted uh, words, and 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 just have them in front of you, and, and know that you're looking for one of these, okay? And right now, and, and with time, you'll see that it will come more immediately to you. It's still a question. There's another here. 
Yeah. But it's still a question. Yeah. The next one is so no, no. Correct. That is the next one. Below. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's not for us. My is the first question. What is the actual uh, mitzvah of the of the the son to his father? And so now it says, but if you were to say, so that's the question on the question. Tanya. Hmm? We found another one. Okay, good. Tanya. Good. So write it down. That is, yes, it is on course. Well, the first one, the second one is another question. Okay. Yeah. So when we get to the logical sequence, we'll say, what is it? Does that make sense? Does that does, does that not make sense? You're right, it doesn't. But right now, write it down, and we'll, we'll revisit it. Okay, so now this is okay. This is the absolutely. It's really an answer. It's just more of a. Well, I guess it could be, but it's a, could be a statement. I guess the statement could also be the answer. Um, um, just if everyone could pause just for a quick second, I just want to point something out. That one of the words, if you look at in, if you look at this at this list, it says the terutz here, the first terutz here, which is the only one, which is the only one that we actually have in our has. The words Hachi Kamar, it's in our sugya, it's just hiding because it appears in our sugya like that. Okay? So it would be very, sorry, it would be very, very easy to miss. So I'm giving you this one because I, it's too easy to miss. Hey Kuf is Hachi Kamar. Yes. Array. Probably, probably the answer. answer. Could be a question. That's right. Could be the question, right? Oh, okay. Oh, the array. Here it is. Ish. 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 The nine is from where, is it? From where do we know? Oh no, no, no. <laughs> Guys, don't be tempted to try to understand right now what the Gemara is saying. You got to take a step back and try to do something artificial, which is just to try to figure out what the Gemara is doing. Oh, wait. 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 We haven't had an answer yet. Yeah. 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 We're not giving very many explanations to what the answer is. The how are we doing? So this is the next one. Okay. So this is Yes, a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a
Yeah. That's a Taurus. Yeah. 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 Ravi Huda, Hachitama. If anyone needs help, don't ask me. Ask the Chafuta. The rabbis so maybe it's, uh, it's just uh, 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 no. So that is uh, this is just something like <laughs> Yes. Yeah. That it, that it's an answer. It's taught to us. We understand from it. Did you get me? So why why don't you want to? Okay. So what is the father's obligation? um just a quick pause there's another there's another acronym here in the uh, um, in the Gemara which is important for you to know which is these which is these letters okay which means Salka data okay you're gonna need that as well Okay, it's an acronym that appears towards the end of a sugya, and uh, uh, you're gonna and uh, you're gonna need that as well. How do we know where the sugya ends? Colon. Okay. It must end here. Uh, okay. See the colon? Yeah. 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 So he should teach him a trade. Okay, but now we start. The you uh, see, Salmas yeah. Dalit, yeah, yeah. it appears yeah. 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 right over there. So, this is our word no? here. Rabbi Yehud Omer, Ko She'eno Mezatev, Et Pedo, Omanut, Belamzo, Listos, Listos. Oh, yeah, it's actually going to say. Oh, that's right, we call it on the chart. It's going to be a chart here, Charlie 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 here, or we just identified the function we were to And now and now try to do the logical sequence. No, 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 no. Logical sequence is based on identifying the function words. No, so you did this here. When I say uh, when I say when I say um, create logical sequence is here. My is a function word. These are the function words. Like 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 one way of doing it is saying my what is my it's a question. What I'm saying here, these are all the function words, and now let's try to either way, that's it, you're done. You're done. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm you would think that as if that it was if or he actually taught him to uh, uh, You're going up to yes, yeah, up to the thought. So it's not like this to do it more No 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 listen. No, that's what you got. It. It's fine. We'll do it together and we'll see what what you know if you miss something, what you missed and what. Now, does it? Uh, fine, uh, uh, send to we'll the see, we'll see. Uh, this is a question. Uh, 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 what you say? If you say, 
wizard. So that was a yeah. Uh, Ilma, yes. if you yeah. say Ilma, yeah. We're, 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 we're quite a few, man. Yeah. <laughs> what is what is the Okay, we're gonna another two three minutes. Okay, another two three minutes, and we're gonna bring it back in. If you say, if you say, Okay, yes, 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 but I suppose you have a question. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Yeah. Okay. And, and then a statement. Yeah. So then the, we have a statement. Is ish. There'll be something in between the chat. Ish any ish. That is correct. There is something missing there. Or merit. Rabbi Yehuda or merit. Rabbi Yehuda has a statement. Koshe ino melamed. Okay. You can say, Amara, 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 no, no, this is the, I mean, we're going to be learning from this point. This could be, you know, that I understand. But I'm trying to ask you why did you choose this? Because it's the beginning of our material. So where is and the reason I chose this to be the beginning material is because A, it's interesting and because its structure is very simple. So it's a good one to start with. The next few are very, very simple structures, but the content, which we'll get to later on, is also very interesting. That combination is a, is a winning combination for us. Okay, that on one hand, simple structure, but extremely interesting and relevant content. And then as we go... You had a particular Four years. We didn't just well, we not, 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 not at all. Maybe this is not the reason, reason that you yeah. chose. Absolutely. Absolutely. Later on, we'll get to the fact okay. that there's, uh, there's some hey, yeah. <coughs> Okay, so the next um, um, After we we've kind of squared so away or kind of created a basic foundation of function words, we will learn is also like something that we that I like to call structure words, which is like. Uh, which is like the word hooray, which kind of gives you an idea of, of, of um, not, not what function it serves, but just kind of makes it, it helps you make order. Like the word and. Okay? The word and um, doesn't serve a function in the sense that it doesn't let you know if this is going to be a question or an answer or an attack or a removal of an attack. Because and, the word and can be part of a question, and the word and can be part of an attack, but and is telling you that there's two separate things here. There's one and two. I don't know if that one and two are. Both part of a text or both yes. part of an answer, but those are, that's what they call a structure word because it helps you create right. structure to whatever this stage is. Doesn't have to identify the stage, but it helps you have structure to the stage. Okay, so hooray is a structure word, not a function word. Yes. 
Uh, quick question for you. So something like Tanur of Anand. So the, uh, in, in your sort of rubric here, you know, you list it as, um, as part of a uh, Mamre. Right. But, you know, knowing what it means in Hebrew, might it also sometimes be a, 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 a Raya? Like in this case, you are absolutely so correct. It's a Raya. fits more like Because, a yes, you are absolutely correct. In this case, it is part of a Raya because the word, the Tanur of Anand here does not appear on its own. Mm -hmm. It appears Tanina Leha. And Tanina is a Raya. So, it's just being quoted as part of a raya. So yes, mm -hmm. okay. perfect. Okay, okay. We will use the silence that exists in the room right now as a chance to kind of bring things in. Okay, because no. Uh, um, okay. Well, Okay, we are going to start. So, um, who wants to uh, wants to go first? Just we're not going to read the text. We're just going to. Uh, uh, tell me the function words that you have found. Okay, uh, okay we have the first well, one. Okay, any, the anyone I really got. <laughs> it was mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait. So yeah. So my serves as what? As a question. As a question. Okay. <laughs> Correct. Um, so yeah. So you know what? Before that. We're going to do, okay, fine, yeah, this will do. Okay, we might, uh, uh, we're going to send it to be a she'ela. Um, now, what is it asking a question on? On the Mishnah, right? On the Mishnah. The whole Mishnah was brought, and then the Gemara, okay. Next function word? Ilema. Ilema, very good. Okay, what function does it serve? It's, an, it's another question. Okay, so most people wrote this down as a question. Okay, shh, wait, you guys don't say anything yet. Okay, I'll get to you later. Uh, don't ruin this by, by giving away the correct answer. <laughs> okay, so Shayla, because you guys also originally put it down as a Shayla, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then you saw something that doesn't make sense. Right. Fine, that's what I want to, I want to go through that process. Okay, okay so Shayla, we understand the word Elayma to be Shayla. Because both affected on my page, I put it as a shela. But as of course, what does the word ele what does the word ilema mean? It means e means if lema is to say if you say okay ilema means I'm gonna take a different color here excuse me ilema means okay if you say so this sounds. Wait, did we put it down in the thing as a she'ela? Yeah, we put it down in the thing as a she'ela, mm -hmm. right? And we're going to challenge that soon. Right. So, because it sounds like if you say this, then uh, then what would be the uh, you know? It sounds so we put it down as a she'ela, and and that's what we're going to we're going to treat it for the, at the moment. Next function word. No, I can't. Um, anyone? Ev any, everyone no, here agree with that? Yeah, Tanya. Yeah. Okay. Veha Tanya. What is the What does the word vehatanya mean? It was taught. What? It was taught. Not exactly. The ha. We said that ha. I think we said this last, two weeks ago. It, isn't it true that? Yes. And meaning, but you know, actually, literally would be. But it says. Or but isn't it true that it says in the Brita? We said if you look at the at the it thing here. It say in the Mishnah. Right. It says here. Uh, hatnan hatanya, which means literally. But it says, or doesn't it say in the Mishnah or the Brayta otherwise? So what is that? What stage is that? Kushia. What? Kushia. A kushia, right? Okay. Uh, wait, have you had it? Um, Rabbi, is, uh, the, is uh, the hay before actually hay aleph? If you're no. Standard. No. 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 Okay. Uh, well, yeah. If yeah, yeah, yeah it's like uh, yeah, yeah. If it, it's like two words, ha, tanya, yeah. yeah. Good. It, yeah, sorry. It, it could also be um, a, 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 a memra. Why? Well, the, it's tiny. Ah, okay. So that's that's where we're going to see that there's sometimes one letter can make a huge difference. Tanya is just a quote. Ha Tanya is, doesn't it say the following? So it's, it, that's which, is, which is a kushia. That little hey absolutely <coughs> makes it a kushia every time. Okay? Because that ha is a, is a statement. But it says... And then quote, which is just having quote, okay? Yeah. And at, whereas the phrase detanya with a dalid is as it says in quote. So what would that be? What stage a, would that be? A ra, ra. A proof. So the word tanya, if it appears on its own, it's one thing. If it appears with a hey beforehand, it's something completely different. If it appears with a dalid beforehand, it's some, it's a completely separate thing, okay? And although that sounds like, oh my gosh, it's so much to remember, it really isn't, because 
that rule that I just told you, it's like you just need to remember that, and that's true to like 90% of the cases. Okay, so we have a my Ilema Hatanya. Okay, who wants to, uh, what's our next, what's our next, uh, next one? Hachikamar. Hachikamar, good. Okay, hey, proof, which is what? What is Hachikamar? A Terutz. Okay, I'm writing this in Hebrew, but if you guys want to write it in English, of course you can. Next uh, function word? I'm going to run out of space here. What? Uh, tanina, right. Tanina, right. Tanina. Tanina, and that is a? Right, yeah. Okay, now, if there's anyone here who, who like is lost already in the sense that we did something here that you missed, so stop me and say, and, and make sure that you see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. Uh, or if, or if you had a different one that you thought was a function word, stop and say, well, why isn't this a function word? Or we thought this was. Yeah. Okay, Minayin is actually very close to Minalan. Uh, let's see. Where's Minayin? Uh, you're right. The word Minayin. Um, um, on its own means from where, yeah. which you, if, you, if you were to come and say, oh, I have, this is a function word, yeah. I would say, yeah, you're right. Um, and what we're going to see later on is that there are, I'm just going to toss this out there, but I'm, I'm gonna, not going to elaborate on it too much because I don't want to confuse us yet, um, which is that there's major function words that have to do with the kind of the skeleton, the real skeleton of the sugya, and then there could be minor function words, function words within a stage that, uh, that part of a proof could be bringing a quote that has a little tiny question and answer in it. Okay? So you're, you're right, that the word minayin actually means from where, which is a question. Okay? But it's not part of the skeleton of the sugya. Okay? And as we go and as we learn how to use these things, we'll be able to detect. Because, because if you were to put in that minayin, here, I'll just go, go show you this as an example. Where's that minayin? Let's see. Just a second. What? Oh, here you go. Okay. So, if we, if I, if, if I were to take what you're saying and say, yeah, there's a little shy line there, I would put the shy line here. Right? I'd put the shy line in here. Okay, so right now, just, we'll leave that in there. Okay? We'll leave that in for a second and we'll see why we're going to toss it out. Okay? Um, Next function word after after tanina. Tanurabanan. Well, uh, we said the tanurabanan is ob is obviously part of the tanina, right? Tanina lahada tanurabanan. We quoted in from the Mishnah what it says in the Mishnah. Okay, so that's all part of the that's all part of the tanina. Next one. Well, you know, you know. Let, let me stop here for a second. Let's say. Okay, I just told you something now that you should say, well, how is he supposed to know that? Right. Okay, stop assuming that what I tell you, just stop accepting it. I was telling, I was sharing with some of my colleagues earlier that it's so much fun to teach adults because, because they just, they just want to learn, they're so motivated. The problem is they just, they believe you. Whereas teaching teenagers, <laughs> it's the exact opposite. They believe absolutely nothing that comes out of my mouth. So, you know, it's kind of like I have an opposite extreme. So, so, so if I say something that doesn't make sense, they're like, well, okay. But I just told you, well, Tanina and the Tanama, it's obviously part of the same stage. Well, I am a spitz. It's obvious to you. How was I supposed to know that? So fine, I accept the challenge that no one here was willing to challenge me with. <laughs> and I will say that, okay, so, uh, um, so uh, let's put down the, another stage here, the Tanua Banan, okay? And this phrase, the Tanua Banan, would be what function would it serve if it was its own function word? Let's say it's its own function word. What? The Tanu Rabbanan. Remember, Dalit beforehand, it's a Raya. As the rabbis taught. Okay? So, this would give us another Raya. So, now, can t tell me why it is obvious that it's not a separate function word. It's two words away from each other. Two ra'ayat within, within, within the same two words 
that doesn't make logical sense, right? That's as far as a logical sequence, it doesn't make any sense. Here's a proof, here's a proof. Well, obviously, you just told me here's a proof. Yeah. Okay? So obviously, this is not two different stages. Rather, what? It's one stage. <coughs> it's just telling you, I'm about to give you a proof from a tonight source. So now you understand why, what I said before, which is, it's obviously it's part of the same stage. Because if it's separate, it doesn't make any sense. Is the, issue so that the, sense. Words, just is the issue that the words are too close to each other, or is that the issue that you don't usually get two consecutive proofs of, the, um, of, one, of one? Good question. I'll toss it out here to, the, to, the, to everyone. Is my problem here, is my proof that it's, that it's not a separate stage? Or is the logic supporting the fact that it's not a separate stage, is it the fact that they're just so close to each other? Or the fact that a proof would not be logically followed by a proof? Which one of those is, the, is, the, is, is, is I think, the winning argument? The latter one. Latter one? Yeah. No, it's the first one. No, it's the second first one. What's the third yeah. option? Both. Both. <laughs> oh, that would be a fourth option. Both. They're both. Again, we're trying to we're trying to analyze something, you know, which is a live conversation. So both of those would be proof. There'd be no point of saying, "I'm going to bring you a proof." I'm going to bring you a proof. Like, like it's not, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Besides the fact that that a proof would not be logically followed by a proof. Those are both good ways for us to come to the conclusion that this is not no. two separate stages. No, but you could have two proofs against one, against one. Uh, you could theoretically, right? but you wouldn't because if I brought a first proof, if I brought my proof and it's a good proof, I mean, why would I possibly need why to bring another proof? One? The only reason I would have to bring a second proof is if, I was if, sure. if you're not if sure, or if something has happened, or someone has said something to cast doubt on my proof. If my proof is good, that's it. If my proof is not good, if I need another proof, then, some, then, then someone, something or someone would cast doubt on my proof. Okay? That, if that you need a, a second rule, proof, the what? first that proof can't be good. That's not necessarily intuitive, right? I could say, this is true for this reason and this reason. Well, under the understanding that these are people who are having like highly intellectual uh, um, legal argumentation, if I brought you a proof, the only reason I'd have to bring you another proof is something wrong with the first proof, right? But if somebody doesn't buy the proof, I mean, then they're, they're, then please speak up. But if you're in court, then you go, then says, you go through the, the cycle the again. Guilty. Then so, the only reason That's why you would bring another proof right? is I said, well, I object. I think you still give two proofs, though. What? I think the guy's guilty for this reason and this reason. Not uh, here's. I think he's guilty for this reason, and that's it. Okay, I hear what he's saying. Okay, theoretically it might be possible, <laughs> but usually a second, let's say, rebuttal, let's say, will always come if the first one is lacking in it. Sometimes the Gemara will explicitly tell you where someone will will challenge it, and you're right. Sometimes it'll be. Right, it, it's, it's not a golden rule. Sometimes strategically you'll hold back the second one. Right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go. In, in this case, though, the, uh, the answer that seemed, uh, the explanation that seemed silly, that they're too close together. Is yeah, well. this one I think that because, it, that giveaway. If, if a proof is a citation or a quote, right. and we have one word in between, it doesn't. It doesn't yeah, yeah, right. I agree. Right, okay, so let's, let's uh, yeah. Is that the same thing with the, the Sha'ir and the. Yes. Yeah, yes, it is. Because a Kushia would not be followed by a Sha'ilah. Log just from logical, just lo from lo logical structure of, argue, of, of, of a discussion, argumentation. I'm attacking you. Now again, you could argue it may be, if I'm attacking you, and I would say, well, what do you mean by this attack? Or do you, but th it's not the way the Gemara works. It no, doesn't. Really I'm in the middle of attacking you. Uh, you said something, and I'm attacking you. Um, now, could someone ask a clarifying question on the, on the attack? No, because, remember, the whole concept of an attack is just that, I meaning if I can, if I'm not sure about the attack, meaning, we said, remember we said, what's the difference between an attack and a question? What's the difference between an attack and a question? A question is looking for, looking for information. A question comes from a place of, of a lack of knowledge, looking for more information. An attack comes from, comes from knowledge. An attack comes and says, I know that you are wrong. An attack is making a statement of certainty. So, of certainty. So if I have a question, on the attack, that means that whatever certainty you're claiming to come from is not so certain. So a question would not logically, the question would not come after a kushia. Because if there's anything about the kushia which is not absolute, 
That becomes what? My terrorists. What are we talking wait, about? Wait, wait a second. You got that? Yes. If there's anything about your attack that is not absolute, there you go. I find my place to come and say, oh, maybe the, the case is not what you think it is. So I wouldn't need a sh if, if there's any doubt about the, the kushia, that becomes my terrorists. So a she'ela would not follow a kushia. I think we're talking about And about therefore, it. wait, so saying, and therefore, right. either if I suddenly detect a word that sounds oh, like a she'ela, right, after kushia, I said, oh, this must be a minor function word. Within, within the kushia, there's a question coming into play as part of the attack. Okay? A, st a strategic move within the attack to kind of build up the attack. Okay? Yeah. So back to the, uh, the idea of not having double uh, raya. Can you have double sha? Is that part of the problem why uh, il ilmai is not? Yep. You also wouldn't have a kushi after a shaila. What? Correct. Unless you say, Correct. I'm asking you a question. Why would you ask such a stupid question? Meaning? That would be an attack on your question, but no one would do that. No, it, it doesn't make sense. Again, you're talking about, you're talking, it's, 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 you're talk, it's imagine that you're talking about, we're not just talking about guys sitting around and talking conversation. There's a, there's a highly advanced uh, uh, legal argumentation by legal experts. Okay? So there's going to be logical sequence. And that's our key to understanding what's going to be happening here. So we don't have that much time, so let's, let's finish up. So after the Tanina, what do we have? Two. Um, oh, nice. I didn't even think of that one. Where's that? Wait a second. Dichtim. <coughs> what is oh, Dichtim? Where do we sit? Where do we sit? Uh. Right, we're up to the we're up to the Tanina, which is our Raya. I don't know where we sit. And then what's the next one? I have that. Uh, what, uh, the abbreviated one. The Salka, the Samech Dalat, Salka Dalat right. Tach. Okay. Salka Dalat Tach. Salka Dalat Tach. Does anyone have? Okay. Salka Dalat Tach. What does that serve as? A kushia. A kushia. Okay, so I had one which I wasn't sure about. Yes. Because so I'll tell you a secret, we are missing one. Because we're actually mm. Rabbi. Very good. Rabbi Yehuda Omer. Yep, that's right. Rabbi Yehuda Omer. This is a hidden one. That's hard. Okay. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, what is that? What stage is that? It's a main uh, ra. Yes. I wasn't it's a main ra. Okay. When we play it out, I'll explain to you how you should have... How, how we could next time when we encounter this, how would we know this? Again, this is our first time. So, obviously... There's a lot here that we're like, oh, how are they supposed to know that? And fine, that's why we're doing it. We're going to learn how, how we would pick up some of these things. And then, uh, so we have the salta that top, which is the kushia. And what is our, and what, and, and anyone, anyone have any function word after that? Let's put it this way. What, what is that, what is going to be the next stage? Forget about the function word. The colon. What? The colon. No. <laughs> after kushia, what's, what is it going to be? Oh, sorry. After a Terrorists. attack. There's going to be a terrorist. Okay? There's going to be a terrorist, but right now I'll leave this blank because none of the words that I have on our list, because no, the list is never going to be complete, is, uh, is there is a terrorist there, but right now it's hidden from us. Okay? Right now, based on what we've learned so far, you do not know yet. We do not know yet how to find it. Okay? So we will leave it as a, we, we know there's going to be a terrorist here somewhere, we're just not sure where. I would say it's Ella. It is Ella. Yes. It is Ella. Correct. But we don't know that yet. Okay? Now, just very, very quickly, I'll explain and, and then the rest will be for next week, um, which is um, a few people here said, look, this doesn't make sense. Shela, shela, kushia. This is not a logical sequence. What we would do now after we identify function words and say, okay, based on what we know, my is a shela, ilayim is a shela, haftan is a kushia. <coughs> so we say, okay, now we look. Does this make sense? A shela followed by a shela. Does that make sense? No, no it does not. Okay? So the problem is that I wrote to you guys that Ilema is a, is, a, is a question. But I'm always debating amongst myself whether Ilema to define it as a question or not. Because what does the phrase Ilema mean? It means, if you tell me, uh, you know, I have here, a question, okay? I, so you ask me a question, and, and, and I say, I ask you a question. And I say, if you tell me the answer is this, that's not possible, okay? So the, that's not possible is what? That's our? Kushia. Kushia. 
But the phrase, if you tell me one, two, three, what is the function of that phrase? If you tell me one, two, three, then I'll tell you it's impossible. So on the one hand, it's, 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 it's almost like part of the kushia. It's almost like part of the attack. I can say, don't you dare tell me that this is the answer. Because if you tell me that, I'm going to rebuttal that. Right? Think of the phrase, if you tell me. If you tell me is setting up something that's going to be rejected, right? If you tell me, you know, why did you do that? If you tell me you did it because, uh, because you were tired, I'll say that's no excuse, right? So the phrase, if you tell me, is setting up something. So uh, uh, I've been going back and forth, and I've changed my mind. From now on, the term ilema is an answer. But it's an answer that's going to be rejected. Because who's speaking, okay? Who is speaking when they say, if you take... So so it's, it's, it's a, um, what's the word? The attacker. No, it's, it's, a, it's a question that doesn't, it's a... Sarcastic? Yeah. Rhetorical? Yeah, yeah. Rhetorical. Rhetorical. It's a, right. 